module number 17 screen print line work screen printing is a printing technique where a mash is used to transfer ink onto a substrate except in areas made impermeable to the ink by a blocking stance a blade or squeegee is moved across the screen to fill the open mash apertures with ink and a reverse stroke then causes the screen to touch the substrate momentarily along a line of contact this causes the ink to wet the substrate and be pulled out of the mash apertures as the screen springs off after the blade has passed screen printing is also a stencil method of printing make of print making in which a design is imposed on a screen of polyester or other fine mesh with blank areas coated with an impermeable substrate ink is forced into the mesh openings by the fill plate or squeegee and by wetting the substrate transferred onto the printing surface during the squeegee stroke <coughs> screen printing is a form of stencilizing that first appeared in a recognizable recognizable form in china during the song dynasty 960 to 1279 AD it was then adapted by other asian countries like japan and was further refined by creating newer methods screen printing was largely introduced to western europe from asia sometimes in the late 18th century but did not gain large acceptance or use in europe until silk mash was more available for trade from the east and profitable outlet for the medium discovered screen printing is also a stencil method for a stencil method of print making in which a design is imposed on a screen of polyester or other fine mesh with blank areas coated with an impermeable substrate ink is forced into the mesh openings by the fill plate or squeegee and by wetting the substrate transferred onto the printing surface during the squeegee stroke as the screen rebounds away from the substrate the ink remains on the substrate It is also known as self screen screen printing and serigraphy printing. One color is printed at a time, so several screens can be used to produce a multicolored image or design. There are various terms used for what is essentially the same technique. Traditionally, the process was called screen printing or self screen printing because silk was used in the process prior to the invention of polyester mesh. Currently synthetic threads are commonly used in the screen printing process the most popular mesh in gen- in general use is made of polyester there are special use mesh material of nylon and stainless steel available to the screen printer there are also different type of ma- types of mesh sizes which will determine the outcome and look the finished design on the material time 5 Prepare sketches in a size of 7 inches into 7 inches with the help of computer, Photoshop or ink brush pen. Select one image for this assignment. Screen printing was introduced to Western Europe from Asia in the late 18th century but did not gain large acceptance or use in Europe until silk mesh was more available for trade from the east and a profitable outlet for the medium discovered. Early in the 1910s several printers experimenting with photoreactive chemicals used the well known actinic light activated cross linking or hardening traits of potassium sodium or ammonium chromate and dichromate chemicals with glues and gelatin compounds Roy Beck Charles Peter and Edward Oynes studied and experimented with chromic acid salt synthesized emulsions for photoreactive stencils This trio of developers would prove the prove to revolutionize the commercial screen printing industry by introducing photo image stencils to the industry. Through the acceptance of this method would take many years. Commercial screen printing now uses stencil like synthesizers for safer and less toxic than bichromates. Currently there are large selections of pre-synthesized and user mixed synthesized emulsions emulsion chemicals for creating photoreactive stencils 
a group of artists who later formed the National Serigraphic Society coined the word serigraphy in the 1930s to differentiate the artistic application of screen printing from the industrial use of the process. Serigraphy is a word formed from Latin serica, silk and Greek graphian to write or draw. Time 8. In 1907, Samuel Simon patented screen printing in England. At first, the process was used to print interesting colors and patterns on wallpaper and fabrics, and then by advertisers. Eventually, however, it was adopted by artists as a convenient and reliable way of reproducing their works. In today's contemporary world, screen printing is used by fine arts along with commercial printers who use graphic screen printing to place images on t-shirts, DVDs, glass, paper, metal and wood. In the 1930s, a group of artists who wanted to differentiate what they did from the commercial world formed the National Serigraphic Society. In doing so, they linked the word serigraphy with fine arts and screen printing. In recent history, the pop artists were generally seen to have popularized the form of screen printing known as serigraphy. Pop artists took their images from the world of mass culture, so it was appropriate that they use a technique known for its mass production ability. Pop artists also valued the use of the medium, finding it, suites, finding it suited their aesthetics. Screen printing is arguably the most versatile of all printing processes. Since rudimentary screen printing materials are affordable and readily available, it has been used frequently in underground settings and subcultures, and the non-professional looks of such DIV culture screen prints have become a significant cultural aesthetic seen on movie posters, record album covers, flyers, shirts, commercial fonts, in advertising, in artwork and elsewhere. Now it is time to prepare the photosensitive solution. Hello, hello. Time ten thirty. Now it is Time to prepare the photosensitive solution. Mix 3 parts PVA, 1 part synthesizer properly. Now coat the screen clothes with this solution evenly and dry this in the dark room. Note, the screen once coated with the solution, the screen once coated with the solution is extremely sensitive to light. Hence, be very careful to leave it to dry in the dark room. In the 1960s, First, Eduardo Palauzi and then Andy Warhol began to use screen printing as a fine art technique. Many artists have used the medium to use the medium to reproduce imagery appropriated from popular culture and challenge ideas about what could be art. Contemporary artists like Ryan McGuinness follow in their footsteps. Time 11. In screen printing, a screen is first created by stretching a fabric, example silk, over a frame of wood or aluminium. The image is first drawn, manually or with software, on a piece of paper or plastic or captured in a photograph. Then it is cut out to form a stencil. Next, the stencil is attached to the screen, then areas of the screen mesh are blocked with a waterproof masking medium. These areas become the negative areas of the final image. The screen is then placed over the desired substrate, example paper, glass, textile. And ink is then applied to top of the screen and spread across the screen, over the stencil and through the open mesh onto the substrate underneath. The ink is spread using a squeegee, a rubber blade, usually the same width as the screen. The unblocked area is where the ink filters through and creates the image. Any number of colors can be used, although a separate screen is required for each color. 
The stencil designs are generally created using software programs like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. The designs are then printed on clear vellum which is referred to as the film positive. Although screen printing is, the, is in principle a simple stencil process, the kinds of image the kinds of images which can be produced cover a wide spectrum. Depending on the stencil used, the artist can produce a range of effects, from broad, simple areas to fine, detailed, even photographic images. This wide range is broadened further by the use of various combinations of transparent and opaque colors and by printing on various kinds of paper. The stencils are printed sequentially, one color at a time, one over the other. Each color is printed in turn on all copies in the addition before the next color is applied. Thus, the size of the addition cannot be increased after the second stencil has been printed, assuming that the stencils are destroyed after each printing, which is usually the case. Because screen printing was a preferred medium of the op artist, it became the predominant printmaking technique in the 1960s and 1970s. Important artists of that time were Harry Sternberg, Royal Lichtenstein, Andy Warhol, Robert Indiana, Nicholas Krushenik, Victor, El Victor Wasserle, Joseph Albers, R.B. Kitaj, Robert Rauschenberg, Richard Hamilton and many others. Time 1515. Carefully select one screen, complete with a wooden frame and a stretched screen cloth. The size of this matrix for this assignment is 7 inches into 7 inches. Example Artist Artist, artist Helen Frankenthaler Helen Frankenthaler Artist, sculptor and printmaker Helen Frankenthaler is an influential figure in America in American art of the late 1950s and early 1960s. Born in 1928 in New York, Frankenthaler was known to have a leaning towards the arts when leaning towards the arts when her parents enrolled her in progressive experimental schools. At 15, she attended the Dalton School, originally called the Children's University School. There, she studied art under Mexican painter and muralist Rufino Tamayo, 1899-1991. At 16, she enrolled in Bennington College, Vermont, where she studied painting under Paul Philae, 1910-66. Philae was instrumental in Bannington becoming a cultural outpost of outpost for the New York for the New York art world, and he regularly organized exhibitions of abstract expression. Abstract expression. In 1948, Frankenthaler moved back to New York, and in 1950, she met the art critic Sleeman art critic Clement Greenberg at the Bannington Alumni Exhibition, time 1645. While coating the screen, make a thin, while coating the screen, make a thin, smooth, even coating on both sides on the screen, trying to avoid rips and runs. Through this, through this association, she was introduced to abstract painters such as Jackson Pollock, 1912 to 1956, Lee Kranzer, 1908 to 1984, Franz Klein, 1910 to 1962, and William D. Koenig, 1904 to 1997. She was also encouraged by Greenberg to study under Hans Hoffman, 1880 to 1966, but she was known more to be impressed particularly by Jackson Pollock. She adopted his style of drip paintings to to a further note by using the technique of pouring very thin paint onto canvas like washes and stains of watercolor. 1952 was a pivotal year of Frankenthaler. After a trip to Nova Scotia, she painted her mountains and sea, pioneering her color 
chain painting technique working with a large canvas on the floor and artist thin her time 1750 now place a screen in the dark room to dry to dry out time 1752 The egg surface artwork has to be turned towards the immersion on the screen. Do not turn on the lights as the screen is still light sensitive. Make sure the immersion on the screen is completely dry on both sides before attempting to begin. Working with a large canvas on the floor, the artist thinned her oil paints with turpentine and poured directly onto the canvas. Although it was oil paint, the effect was like watercolor. The unprepared canvas absorbed the colors sometimes causing a halo effect. This technique known as soak stain was also used by Pollock. Time 1755. The screen has to be laid down on the glass of the light table for exposing to light box or if you are in outdoor environment expose the art expose the artwork in the direction of sunlight. It particularly impressed Kenneth Nolan 1924 to 2010 and Morris Lewis 1912 to 1962 when they visited Fragantuller's studio in 1955 and in doing so helped launch a second generation of color field painters the original pioneers of color field painting color field painting being Mark Roth Roth Mark Rothko 1903 to 17 and Barnett Newman 1905 to 17 in the 1940s and 50s unfortunately the soak stain technique has proven a headache for art curators as the oil in the paint comes into direct contact with untreated canvas and eventually rots Throughout the 1950s, Fragantler continued to paint and exhibit, drawing inspiration from her love of landscape. In 1957, she married contemporary artist Robert Motherwell, a relationship which lasted 13 years and proved beneficial to both artists' creative development. Note: Although she although seen as an important contemporary female artist, Fragantler was uninvolved in the feminist art movement that emerged in America during the late 1960s. Time 1830. Carefully keep the screen frame on the artwork transparency and with proper pressure. Ensure there is even contact between the screen and the artwork. Time 1832. Turn on the lights of the light box for exposing for 5 minutes. in sunlight 1 minute or sunlight intensity time 1835 clean the screen frame with water immediately 20 is to 14 to 20 is to 55 change in time 18 is to 35 to 19 is to 3 in 1962 fragantler switched from oils to acrylic painting which allowed her to achieve better saturation in her colors Her paints appear to almost float on the canvas and are especially suited to landscape painting. She continued to exploit the stain technique working primarily with large scale canvases. In 1964 she was invited to join the Post Painterly Abstraction Exhibition organized by Greenbow along with 30 other artists including including Kenneth Nolent, Paul Feile, Frank Stella, B 1936 Mason Wells and Sam Francis 1923-94 as old style abstract expressionist painting began to decline the term post painterly abstraction gained some ground in the 1960s this encompassed abstract art movements such as lyrical abstraction as well as various forms of minimalism minimalism including hard edge painting Time 1919. Cover the inner corner of the screen frame with cello tape. This is now ready for printing. Time 1920. Prepare the ink to be used and apply it on the screen and pull the squeegee softly with color. The color will pass through the cloth onto the paper. Frank 
Campilla received her first major recognition in 1956 when she won first prize at the at the Paris Biennale. In 1966, she, she represented America at the Venice Biennale and in Montreal at the Expo 67. She, she also expanded her range of artistic mediums and materials at this time to include printmaking, ceramics, aquatints, woodcuts, and lithographs. In 1972, she created her first sculpture. In the 1980s, Frankenstein's paintings became somewhat somber and calm, somewhat somber and calmer in both mood and color. In 2001, she received the National Medal of Arts, and in 2003, the Scovagen Medal for Print. Scovagen Medal for Painting. She is also a member of the National Institute of Arts and Letters, Arts and Letters, 19, 19, 1935. Mark the final print on the final paper and take the edition. Time 2010. Write all details and the signature on the print. She was a major contributor to the history of post-war American painting. Having exhibited her work for over six decades, early 1950s until 2011, she spanned several generations of abstract painters while continuing to produce vital and ever-changing new work. Prakantula recognized that as an artist, she needed to continually change herself in order to grow. For this reason, in 1961, she began to experiment with Printmaking at the Universal Limited Art Editions (ULAE), a lithographic workshop in West Essel, Long Island. Prakantler collaborated with Tat Tatiana Grossman in 1961 to create her first prints. In 1976, Prakantler began to work within the medium of woodcuts. She collaborated with Kenneth E. Tyler. The first piece they created together was Essence of Mulberry. Essence of Mulberry, 1977, a woodcut that used eight different colors. Essence of Mulberry was inspired by two sources. The first was an exhibition of 15th century woodcuts that Frankenstein saw on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The second being a mulberry tree that grew outside of Tyler's studio. In 1995, the pair collaborated again, creating the Tales of Genji, a series of six woodcuts print. In order to create woodcuts with a resonance, similar to Prakantler's painterly style, she painted her plants onto two wood itself, to wood itself, making macuties. The Tales of Genji took nearly three years to complete. Prakantler then went on to create Madame Butterfly a print that employed 102 different and two different colors and 40 and 46 wood blocks madam butterfly is seen as the ultimate translation of prakantler style into 